with the perfect PPM calculator. That's a big deal that I get. How many PPM do I need and when? So there's a couple of things that I try to show you. One is, it's relative. As the plant gets bigger, you're going to give it more PPM. That doesn't mean you have to give it the PPM every time. And what I like to illustrate that point is, if you guys are transitioning from veg to flour, you're going to go from a one gallon bucket to a five gallon bucket, let's say. If you feed that next round at 1,000 PPM, there's only one gallon of roots. So four gallons of media have 1,000 PPM in it the next time you water. So you water and you redistribute that PPM. Um, actually, in your bag, you guys have this set of cards. You're looking for the HM digital one that has the mixing nutrients on the back. There's four bottles of nutrients. It has two meters on the front. Four, there you go, left hand top. Yes, that one. Looks like this. All right, so this thing here, yeah, that one. What I try to get with you guys, and if you look at the bottom left and the bottom right, what I try to get you guys to realize is you can see that there's roots in the bottom left picture. You can see in the bottom right, there's just all nutrients piled up in there. Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy to continue to give the plant too many nutrients, too many nutrients, too many nutrients. You're not aware that it's building up. Here's a way to kind of predict how many PPM you want, how many PPM the plants want. As they get bigger, they want more. If there's more light, they want more. So this is what I, this is a blank one down here so you guys can write your own PPM in. But uh, what I want you to get before I show you the math behind it is, see how they get bigger? This one wants more light and more PPM than back here. If you try to give a plant this size, this much light, you need like 40 of them. Because otherwise you've got not enough plant, way too much light. So what I try to go over is this. We start here. This is the perfect PPM calculator. It starts with light. Because light is going to be the determining factor of what our yield is. We get eight flowers from a 400, 16 from a six, and 24 flowers from a thousand watt light. It also requires more space. So you have to have healthy plants and lots. So the first question, what's your bulb? Let's say you got a thousand watt bulb. Second, light mover or CO2? Each one of those things is worth 25% more. Remember in the photosynthesis equation, light for energy, CO2 and water equals sugar and oxygen. So CO2 and more light are the only two things we can add more of to get more yield. A light mover gives you more light and products like exhale CO2 give you more CO2. So here's a mushroom substrate with an inoculate on it. You break it up so the whole inoculate gets the substrate to cover it. Over the next few days to a week, this bag will puff up with CO2. And like coffee, it just off gases to all the CO2 is consumed. But in all conditions, CO2 is the limiting equation in photosynthesis because you're not going to add more water. And if you add more light without adding more plant, then you get into trouble because you have too much light and you burn the plants. So the only thing left to do is up CO2. You can add more light by adding a light rail and moving the light over a distance. You can put the light closer. But the only thing left in the photosynthesis equation, CO2. CO2. So the question, the relevancy of how much light do you have a light mover and CO2? Because if you've got a thousand watt bulb and you're adding CO2 and you've got your light on a light mover, you've effectively got 1500 watts. 1500 watts, you are not going to get that yield in a five by five space two feet deep. That's a thousand watts. So if you come in and you tell me you've got a light mover in CO2, 1000 watt in a four by eight tent with a light mover, Four by eight is 32, four times eight, 32, two feet deep, 64 cubic feet. Um, I say that the thousand watts, literally like 50 cubic feet, plus 25% for a light mover, and you're at like 62 equivalent space from a light mover and from a four by eight tent. So like supreme performance in a four by eight tent is a thousand watt light, half the heat on a light rail, seven watts, no heat. And so suddenly you can cover an entire four by eight tent and get 25% more than just that thousand watt. But you also have 25% more space. So adding CO2 at that point and a light rail, suddenly your thousand watt light performs like a 1500 watt light. 
That's why growers don't vent. They don't vent their lights. They don't suck the air out of the room. What they do is they buy an air conditioner and they cool it so they can add CO2. Because if you've got 6,000 watts on in a room, 25% is like another 1,500 watts for no electricity. You can, some heat, you might have to get a burner. That would up the AC, but you can literally buy a $2,500 AC, a one ton unit on rollers here at the store for, for like 2,500 bucks and that will cool six lights and a burner. There are a couple of different ACs. There are cute little ACs that they sell for $500 of plastic rolls, the rollaways. <laughs> and then there's the real units. The big units, they cool four times the air, twice as much for the same electricity. A one ton unit that I sell in my store, 980 watts. That plastic roller unit, 1100 watts. And it does a third, a quarter of the work. AC is one of the few things in growing that scales up. You get 12 lights, requires one person to tend it. You get 24 lights, requires two people to tend it. It does not scale up well. But you go from a three to a five ton air conditioner, that's much cheaper than dealing with venting and all the glass in the hoods, like the glass is the second hottest thing in the hood. So I, in, the, in the garden, the glass is the second, right? the bulbs the first, the glass is the second. That's why your car is 140 when it's only 100 degrees outside because the glass converts light into energy, into heat. So how much light you have, that's gonna be the basis for this equation of figuring out how many PPM. So a customer comes in the store and asks how many PPM. You've got a couple of questions to ask. If you go someplace and someone just gives you an answer, you gotta wonder, you know, I mean, you can't start in third gear, you can't go from first to fifth, you have to match the water and the light to the plant size. All right, the next question. How healthy are your plants? Do you have bug problems, leaf problems, light problems? Did you have too much light? Did you rot the roots? Every one of these problems is going to subtract from your yield, your life cycle. The next question is two parts. What week are you in and what's the expected crop cycle? So if you have a four week veg and an eight week flower, that's 12. If you're in hydro, you would subtract two because uh, hydro finishes shorter than soil. So you would have a 10 week life cycle and let's say you're in week five for the moment and then we'll continue on. The last question is how full is your garden? Because you have to have enough plant material to express the light that you're giving them. Too much light and too small a space and not enough plant and you won't get the yield that you're expecting because you can't grow an apple without growing the tree first. So these are the questions that you kind of have to ask to figure out what the PPM is. But then in the top formula on the, formula on the other side, it's a pretty simple equation to get there. If you know that your life cycle is 10 weeks, if you know your life cycle is 10 weeks, and you know, let's say you have 1,000 watts, 1,000 divided by 10 is 100. So you can figure about 100 watts a week more and about 100 PPM a week more. So week five, five times 100, you'd be at about 500 PPM. That way you hit the max at week 10, and then as you start finishing, you cut the numbers down. That's what this chart here tries to express to you. This one here, if you were at week five, you'd be at 500 PPM. If you were at week 10, 10 times 100 is 1,000. So as a basis, and sort of like a mathematical trick, the watts of light that you have are the max determinant of the PPM that's possible. Effective watts, not just the light. Because if you have CO2 and a light mover, you're at 1,500, you won't exceed 1,500 ppm, according to the chart. Now, after you've done 1,500 ppm, and you've marked your notes, and you've worked out if it works, you can experiment. But you're not going to go wrong for too many nutrients. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to use that ppm every time. Again, if you watered with 1,000, and you just transplanted, and you have one gallon of roots in a five-gallon bucket, you've got four gallons of soil that are holding the nutrients. So you've got four gallons of soil at 1,000 ppm. The next time you water, it'll redisplace the nutrients and you'll have five gallons of soil at 800 ppm. And the, the, where the roots are will consume those nutrients. And the next time you water, the nutrients get distributed and you'll have five gallons at 500 ppm. So when you look at the bottom of this card, what I try to express to you on one side and the other is you might feed the plant once with a thousand and you might not feed again for three times. You might feed water, 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 feed. And so you end up using all the nutrients. The problem is, is if your plant wants 
500 ppm and you feed the bucket a thousand every time there's 500 left over in the rest of the four gallons every time and in the same amount of space if you fed 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 instead of feed water water feed you've got twice the amount of nutrients and suddenly the plant is miniaturizing shrinking the tips are burning and then if the room gets hot she's taking up even more nutrients and rapidly you create an, right an over nutrient situation and so the relationship between how hot the room is, how cool the room is, the media, the water might be cold, she can't absorb the water, and so suddenly you're, you know, she's not consuming the nutrients because of a temperature. So little changes, little subtle changes like that, they can't put on a bottle. So you kind of have to fly the plant and consider some of those things. I mean, second gear is awesome, but you wouldn't be at the fast lane in second gear. Great for across the street, great for getting up the ramp. But you have to be in the right size plant with the right size nutrient and the right size light at the same time. Because you're not going to be able to get a thousand watt yield from a cutting. No matter how close you put the light, you're never going to get the thousand watt yield from a cutting. So it requires a certain amount of space. So that's the correct amount of nutrients. And then we talk about mixing nutrients. So now you know how many ppm, but you don't know if it should be from nutrients or supplements. There are additives, there's all sorts of stuff. So the next question is supplements. Supplements are based on plant health. If, you have, if you're feeding with 500 ppm and your plants are 50% healthy because you had a light and a root problem or something like that, you would cut your nutrients by half and you would add things that solve the problem. Because if you left the nutrients where they were and you just dump more stuff on top of it, fixing a problem that you caused by giving it too much shit is not going to be solved by giving it more shit. So you have to slow the grow, slow everything down, raise the lights, lower the PPM, substitute it with what solves the problem. If it's magnesium, add magnesium. But she doesn't need NPK when the lights are raised and she's short on mag. It's the wrong thing at the wrong time. So you've got to get the right thing at the right time or you can't get from here to there. So the amount of supplements you have will be based on the amount of nutrients that you have. If your plant's 100% healthy, everything will come from NPK. If your plant's 75% healthy, you'll add whatever you require, strength the nutrients and substitute something else in. So I always try to tell you guys that mixing nutrients is a snap. Supplements first, because supplements solve problems. Then you add nutrients when everything's going well because you don't feed a sick plant. And you definitely don't give additives to a sick plant because that just make it sicker faster. <laughs> so supplements solve problems, add nutrients when everything's going well, additives next, and then, you know, the last picture, pH. You don't pH first, you don't pH during in between stuff, you just pH once at the end. Make sure it's anywhere from five to seven because the difference between 6.1 and 6.2 is nothing. You're not gonna get more yield, you're not gonna get less yield. There's anywhere from five to seven. If you want more yield, add more light. You're not gonna get it from the nutrients, you're not gonna get it from the pH. I mean, everything goes on outside without our help. So this is what I try to get to go over with you guys.